All right, this is question number five from the 2014 Calc AB exam, uh, and you are given a table with a lot of information in it. Uh, so the first thing we have to do, find the x-coordinate of each relative minimum of f on the interval from negative 2 to 3. So if I'm looking for that, what I need to do is really consider f prime, and I want a sign change from negative to positive. Um, so that's the row that I want to be looking at, and I need the sign change from negative to positive. Um, so f of x definitely has a relative minimum. Uh, I'm going to say it's at x equals, so there's my sign change from negative to positive, so it's at x equals 1, so at x equals 1, and now I just need to defend it. So I'm going to say because f prime of x changes from negative to positive, so not really that surprising. Okay, um, so, uh, 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 point... Yeah, all right, so the explanations are boring. It's calculus, it's interesting. Um, let's explain, so the next thing. I need to explain why there must be a value of c between negative 1 and 1 such that f double prime of c is equal to 0. So it is definitely true. Uh, what I'll do is I'm going to look at this row again, and if I focus in there between negative 1 and 1, uh, I notice that f prime of negative 1 is 0, f double prime, uh, sorry, f prime of positive 1 is also 0, uh, which means I can use the mean value theorem on this because we're told that um, f is twice differentiable. So f prime is also differentiable. Um, so f double prime of c is definitely 0 for some value uh, between negative 1 and 1. And let's prove it. So f prime of x is continuous and differentiable. That's basically given. Well, it's given that it's differentiable. If it's differentiable, it must have been continuous. Um, so f prime of 1 minus f prime of negative 1 over 1 minus negative 1 is 0, for which is equal to f double prime of c for some c between negative 1 and 1. And that is true by the mean value theorem. Uh, so that's a pretty standard question. Um, and about the best case scenario if you're asked to use the mean value theorem, actually. Uh, so let's do the next one. So we are going to define a new function, h of x which is actually the natural log of f of x, and I'm asked to find h prime of 3. So first of all, h prime of x is 1 over f of x times f prime of x, so don't forget the chain rule there. And now h prime of 3 is 1 over f of 3 times f prime of 3. I always like to write it out with all the values filled in uh, before I start picking points off of tables and things like that. Um, in case I screw it up, maybe that'll give me more points in the long run. Who knows? Um, so, I'm going to look at this part of the table here, because that's when x is 3. So, it's 1 over 7 times uh, 1 half, which is 1 over 14. So, that would be my answer to that. And, uh, finally, in part D, we're given an integral. And this is kind of an interesting question, because it looks a lot uglier than it actually is. So, we have to integrate from negative 2 to 3, f prime of g of x times g prime of x dx. Um, which, if you ignore the integrals, integral and the dx, that looks exactly like the chain rule. Um, so I'm going to do u substitution. So u equals g of x. If x is negative 2, u is equal to g of negative 2, which from the table is negative 1. If x is equal to 3, u is equal to g of 3, which from the table is positive 1. And uh, based on what we made u equal, du is g prime of x dx. So I can rewrite my entire integral as the integral from negative 1 to 1, f prime of u du, which will integrate to f of 1 minus f of negative 1. Um, and then if I look at the table where we're given values of f, um, that's going to be uh, 2 minus 8, because f of 1 is 2, and f of negative 1 is 8. So I get 2 minus 8, which is negative 6, and that's the end of this problem. Hope you found this helpful, and good luck.